Hello, everyone. My name is Amy Brown, and I'm the Director of Events and Education for FacilitiesNet. Thank you for joining us for today's webcast, Grounds Care, learning about the flexibility of year-round mowers. Our speaker today is Brent Dobson, Government Sales Division Manager for Grasshopper Mowers. Brent's focus is on developing individual customer solutions, began in the banking industry as one of the youngest branch managers for a national bank. In the government sales division of Grasshopper, Brent leads a team of product specialists who find the best fit turf maintenance and renovation solutions for an entity's unique situation. And with that, we'll start today's presentation. Hi everybody, my name is Derek. I am a Grasshopper product specialist, and today I'm going to be walking you through the flexibility of year-round mowers. First off, Grasshopper is a solid company, building a durable, long-lasting zero-term mower out of Mound Ridge, Kansas. We not only want our mower to be easy to operate and maintain, but we also want that purchasing experience to be easy as well. We have multiple purchasing paths with contracts and leasing options, and we back up our equipment with a solid warranty, supported by a nationwide network of dealers with parts on hand ready to take care of our customers. Our Grasshopper mowers are great because the same mowers that are used worldwide by government entities are also trusted by the same users at their home. That's just the very nature of how Grasshopper makes their mowers. It's built for all types of uses within the same models. There isn't a divide between residential and heavy duty. All models are commercial grade, built with the same steel exoskeletal construction to provide a durable unit for either all day mowing or years of reliability and ownership. Okay, so when a customer comes in, the, one of the first things they ask is, so why is Grasshopper better? And to that we say, well, it's a higher quality product. Everything from the ground up has been designed with the operator in mind. So the componentry, why, why does that last longer? Well, we use better components. Why do our decks and overall systems work better? Well, we use a higher quality of steel. We use higher quality transmissions. We test for thousands and thousands of hours before they even go on a machine. And we test engines for literally thousands of hours before they go to market. We don't just take other products or other parts and put them on our machine. We actually test them to see how they're going to fail or how they're going to hold up and get a good result. Grasshopper is really known for a high quality of cut and that all starts at the blades. We're using high strength marbane steel blades, a quarter inch thick. The reason starting at the blade is significant is because you can't take a marbane blade of that thickness and put it under a residential mower from some other brand. The belts and the pulleys and everything else wouldn't be able to handle it. A lighter deck just wouldn't be able to handle the material coming out of the discharge chute. And in terms of hardness, you don't want the blade to be too hard because it'll become brittle and break or crack or chip. You want a blade that's both hard so that it's durable and holds its edge, but you also want it to be able to bend if you were to hit a curb or mow over something unexpected. We have seven different blade combinations for different applications. Different types of grasses, conditions, rear discharge, mulching, and they all provide a better life and a better ROI. A blade for every situation. Up from the blade, you've got a massive eight inch spindle to handle those thicker blades that we just talked about and have been designed for long hours of life. Not to mention better belts and better pulleys and all these little details on their own maybe don't matter, but when you add them all together, they matter to the whole machine. In general, we spend a lot of time designing enough power to do what we do. That's especially true with transmissions. With transmissions, we use the term design matched. And a lot of people wonder what that means. The truth is, you're not just looking for speed, but what you're looking for is something that gives you smooth handling, can give you a good ability to mow at an increased pace, but still at a high quality. No matter what you're mowing, you need to be able to have the power to cut through it and handle the material within reason, depending on the type of material and the size, obviously. But you need to have good quality behind you, and that requires a lot of power. And that's why we put so much time into design matching our transmissions. So let's talk zero turn. Compared to an average lawn and garden tractor, a zero turn is probably gonna reduce your mowing time 30 to 50%. So take that same philosophy to implements. If you're pushing snow with a conventional steering wheel piece of equipment, a zero turn will increase your productivity 30 to 50% in the similar application. And when we're talking implements, I'm specifically talking about a front mount zero turn, which Grasshopper probably has one of the largest selections of. We have different sizes for different applications, and the nice thing about having the implement in front of you is that you're in control of it. 
and our traction systems not only allow us to mow with our cutting decks in tight spaces and ditches and whatnot, but it also allows us to control our implement and to be able to maneuver clearing snow on a sidewalk, aerating, using a broom, using a blower, or just mowing down a path somewhere. If anybody's bought in a truck or an SUV recently, you know how customizable those things are. And grasshoppers can be that way too. If you want a rear discharge deck, if you want something like speed trim on the deck that lets you mow close so that you can reduce the trimming, we have tweels if you want airless tires because you're mowing in environments with thorns or things that might make your tires go flat. We have sunshade canopies that have cooling fans and lights for road work. We have beacon light attachments if you're mowing roadways or airports or things you need to be highly visible for. There's a lot of things that you can do to customize it to make it perfect for your application. We talked about blades and their importance to cut quality, but what also matters is how you're discharging. The best quality of cuts are side discharge or collection. The wonderful thing about our decks is that you can pick one deck and then convert it into a collection system or you can convert it into mulching. It's very flexible. Rear discharge is actually a dedicated deck. And we've spent a lot of time not just adding a rear discharge, but adding a quality rear discharge. As far as mulching goes, some mowers just put in a block off plate, nice and simple. But just adding a plate doesn't actually trap the grass so that it's cut several times. Some mowers actually have some baffles that you could put in that help, but they aren't good enough. We actually have a real mulching kit, meaning that we bolt in a different set of baffles that close off each blade. We change the blades to a high-low blade, and we put in a restriction plate on the discharge side. So we're actually adapting that grass to cut off, to put into fine clippings, and put back into the turf like it should be. And as we all know, a lot of the quality in mulching just has to do with the one-third rule. Try not to cut off more than a third of what you're doing. So let's talk fuel. Gas, diesel, what's the best way to go? If a customer currently has a gas fleet, obviously it makes sense to look at gas and comparable power systems. When it comes to diesel though, there are several real benefits. Obviously the first is fuel economy. You can go from perhaps a two or two and a half gallon per hour machine to 0.8 or maybe 1.2 gallons per hour. And that's under load no less. We're talking about actually working the engine and cutting the grass. So fuel economy is big because over the course of a year, you may be cutting that cost in half. On a liquid cool engine and cast iron block like what Grasshopper offers, you're probably going to increase that by maybe three times the life of a normal gas engine. So going to a diesel, you may increase that comparatively three to six times. So that does two things. It's not just that you can run it longer, but let's say you're an agency and you run a machine five, six, seven years, and then you need to trade it out. Having a longer lasting engine means that machine has more value later. So a diesel zero turn is able to hold its value a little bit better in a grasshopper. Now, yes, you do have a little bit more maintenance with a diesel, but the way ours is designed with a wavy radiator screen, it can easily be pulled out and easily cleaned. We also have our own radiator cleaning tool that we've designed, and we spend a lot of time making sure those diesels stay cool. We've got high temp cutoffs on the machine for those really hot and dusty conditions, and we have a lot of other systems we've built in to keep it protected. Grasshopper has an extensive and flexible contract lineup. And depending on where you are in the U.S., we may have state contracts for the federal government, too. We have a couple different federal contract options, depending on what you're looking for, obviously. DLA, GSA, etc. As far as state, local, K-12, higher education, and nonprofit goes, we're on national cooperatives that allow agencies to purchase at a discounted rate based off a bigger buying volume. And with a bigger buying volume, you're getting the buying power of literally hundreds of thousands of other organizations, so you're definitely getting the best price. And with that, you're also getting all the standard features. You're getting the warranty, you're getting the local dealers that are going to service and support the products. So it's not just that you're getting a good price alone, but you haven't lost any of the customer service benefits either. Plus, also in purchasing, maybe your budget is fixed and you need more than just one mower, or you need some implements too. You might look at leasing as an option. Some organizations can get three mowers for the price of one per year. That's just one more way that we're flexible to get you the access to the equipment you need. So we started off talking about blades and how important that is to get the good cut quality that we're known for. But let's talk about the most important thing we care about, the operator. We designed the whole machine around the operator and that starts at the seats. A lot of people want to talk about their seats, so let's talk seats. It's hard to call our standard seat, quote, standard, because it's more a premium seat compared to other brands. 
I was doing air quotes, but you couldn't see that, obviously. Some of those reasons are we have Cordura material that other people don't use. We have steel side panels to handle the weight of operators getting in and out all day long, day after day. You've got extra lumbar support, high backs, thick padded armrests, and a well padded seat cushion that will last. Underneath the seats, we've ISO mounted the operator station, meaning that we've put in special isolators to absorb the vibration. We want to isolate the engine and transmission vibration as much as possible. And on our top end, we have a grammar suspension seat, which can adjust to different operators' weights and adds multiple points of adjustments to meet all preferences. Continuing into operator comforts, we have foam padded levers that are what we call hydro smooth. And what that means is we've dampened the steering from the transmission. It basically takes less than two pounds of pressure to operate these levers. We also do something that other companies don't and have an automatic neutral return. With most other brands, if you're moving forward and you let go of the levers, you keep moving forward. But not with Grasshopper. If you're moving forward and you let go, it slowly comes to a stop. And the reason that's important, because when you have newer operators, the machine moves naturally. When you back off, it backs off. Also, you see a lot of benefit there when you're working in tight spaces. You can push forward smoothly and ease into obstacles instead of slamming into them or oversteering. Another thing that people have trouble with with non-dampened levers is mowing in a straight line. Grasshopper customers don't have that problem. Because of the dampened connection from the operator to the transmission, a lot of our operators can even use one hand in the center and still mow a very straight line. It's much easier than people that are constantly battling their levers or overcorrecting because of the jerkiness. And also for comfort, you have other things like our traction kit, which transfers deck weight from a front mount machine to the power unit and isolated footrests that separate your feet from vibrations. All these things working together to make an unmatched smooth ride. Okay, so finally you've acquired the machine. Good choice. You've operated it and you've realized all the benefits of it. We've talked about how easy it is to own and how easy it was to acquire. So now let's talk about the cost of operations. Wait, ho hold on, hold on, what was that? Oh, this is the uh, old time clips. Here, let me get my announcer voice. Grasshopper's been around for over 60 years. When it comes to fold-over levers, Grasshopper's the one that designed those. We've been doing professional zero turn a long time and we're very good at it. That was fun, let's, uh, let's get back to the presentation. The machine itself has fewer grease points than comparable models. We designed the transmissions on a lot of our bigger units to run a thousand hours without any break-in. That's a thousand hours before you even have to change the oil. We've made getting to grease easy. We've made getting to the filter easy. We've really tried to simplify the time it takes to go over the machine. That way it's not only good for your mechanic, but it means things are going to get done. We know that sometimes if things are difficult to get to on a machine, it may not get done as much, and then it becomes a problem. So we wanna make those things as easy as possible. The operation has obviously been designed to be very easy. Your console's angled, so it's easy to see all your gauges. Your PTO switch, everything is right there at your operator's fingertips. Even on your implements, we have a joystick control that goes right on the lever. Speaking of implements, if you're going to buy a front mount zero turn and decide to add a snow thrower or dozer blade or a collection system, those implements we actually build and are designed to work with. We do have several implements that we buy from other companies, but they are also designed to work with our machine. We spend a lot of time making sure those things work, which gives you a longer service life with that equipment. We know a lot of organizations that run their machines five, six, seven years in their system and then just decide to leave a broom on it or a dozer blade on it and then go get a new mower. Having the commonality between parts is really nice because with Grasshopper, we really have the best of both worlds. Also, that commonality is good for building your fleet. You have to stock less different parts. You could have a diesel mid-mount and a diesel front mount and have the same air filters, oil filters, spindles, blades, etc. But even when you do need parts, we've got all the schematics in the operator's manuals and it's easy to get those parts from our authorized dealers all over the country. So not only do we have potentially a lower price on our parts because we're building a lot of the machines ourselves, but we're allowing our customers to take advantage of volume discounts when available. One of the hardest questions that anybody selling equipment gets is, well, how long is this machine going to last? And honestly, the response to that is, how well are you going to take care of it? That doesn't mean you have to do a lot of work, but it does mean you have to do the right work and take care of it. 
Take mowing blades as an example. Even though you're keeping your blade sharp, you eventually have to change that blade. All of a sudden the dullness may affect belt life. And then maybe you're using more fuel to just cut with that blade. So general maintenance of something as simple as a blade can affect the maintenance of a whole piece of equipment. Just another reason we make maintenance as simple as possible. And that's one of the things I love about Powerfold on our front mounts. You just tilt that deck up, take the blades off, sharpen them or replace them, and you're going again. One of the cool things I'm always impressed with is how much we keep developing. We're not satisfied with good enough or just leave it as it is. We still test parts. We think that's important because there's always new things being developed or different materials that we could use. For instance, even recently, Fisher Barton has come out with a laser edge blade, which is a more expensive blade, but by design, you don't have to sharpen them. They're amazing. So as technology gets better, we're trying to get better right along with it and trying to pass those kinds of advancements onto you guys. We have so many operators that almost fight to be on a grasshopper because they know it's a more comfortable piece of equipment. We know that there are mechanics out there that like to work on grasshoppers because they can work on it quickly and turn it around quickly. Let's be honest, if all you're caring about is making tall grass shorter, a mower is a mower is a mower. If you go buy a residential piece of equipment to try to do commercial work, you're going to be buying a lot of residential equipment. But if you're looking to get the right mower for your situation, every little thing matters. Every part matters. Every detail matters. And we're all about looking at the details and being sure that we build the best equipment. We talk about durability, we talk about the quality of cut, and we talk about comfort. Each one of those things can be compartmentalized into one single thing. A really great driving experience. And if I can leave you with one thing, take the time to look at the quality of how something is built to be sure of what you're getting. Let's be honest again, there's a lot of options in the mowing space and it's going to be a difficult purchase. That's why Grasshopper spent a lot of time making it easy to purchase and making it price competitive too. We're focused on everything from the operator to the buyer and really getting that good result. So that when someone uses a Grasshopper, that's all they want the next time. So whether you're mowing a facility or you're mowing your own home, you don't want to get off a mower and feel like, oh, that was a lot of work. You want to get off and feel like, hey, I really enjoyed that. That's what Grasshopper is all about. And that's it. Thank you guys for your time today. We appreciate it. Hope you pick something up. And if there's anything we can do for you, please reach out. Thanks, Derek, for that presentation. And welcome, Brent. We're great to have you here. It's great to have you here. And we're excited to, to open it up to some audience questions um, for the information you just saw. So hi, Brent. Hello, how are we doing? Good. Just a reminder, you can ask questions through the Q&A portion at the bottom of your screen. Just open that up and you can type in a question. Um, we've got one already from the audience. Um, Brent, is Grasshopper working on an electric version? Well, I think, you know, electric mowers are definitely a topic of mind um, here lately. And we are, uh, what I will say is we're constantly looking at things um, and we're constantly developing new things. Um, the technology for electric mowers has come a long way. There's certainly some um, 80 volt lithium ion batteries out there. And there are a few companies that have come to market um, in terms of like the infrastructure um, from the dealer network and things of that nature. I think it's still got some time to grow. I mean, it's, you know, we're still in an industry where you have both carbureted and electronic fuel injected engines. So um, I think it's definitely something that we'll um, look at in the future. And I'm, I'm sure other companies are too. Perfect. Um, Brent, can you talk about how how difficult it is to change out implements on the grasshopper mower? Sure. So one of the key things, you know, when you're talking about a year round piece of equipment, um, uh, specifically in zero turn, there's, there's really very few out there that you can do mowing and then you can also do uh, spring uh, cleanup or move snow. And so there's two factors there. One is the piece of equipment and the other is the time it takes to switch out implements. Um, Grasshopper has really simplified this into not taking hours, but taking minutes for us in order to remove our de cutting decks, um, which the powerful feature that you saw in the video actually aids in removing, helping remove the deck off of the tractor. Uh, we use quick couplers on our PTO shafts to make it easier to remove and put on. And then the implement hooks up in a very similar fashion. Um, you're, you're hooking up to the same connection pieces. Our uh, wiring harnesses are plug and unplug. 
So literally customers can switch out to things like dozer blades and snow throwers just in minutes. Yeah, that's important these days. I'm in Wisconsin and it can be nice one week, but you never rule out that May snowstorm. Sure. Perfect. Uh, Brent, can you talk about what size cutting decks Grasshopper offers? Sure, so Grasshopper um, in our, we both have both a front mount and mid mount line. And we're one of the few companies that actually has both. In our mid mount line, we start out at 41 inch and we go up to 72. And in our front mount line, we have a 42 inch and we go up to 72 inch and cut. Great, and a follow-up question to that. Um, what is the steepest bank an angles that these machines can be used on? Um, you know, in terms of incline movement, we're not a slope mower. There are other companies out there that build slope mowers. Um, we do mow, um, you know, various terrain, rolling terrain, um, certain ditches and things of that nature. Um, in terms of like an actual, um, uh, people sometimes don't quite know if they're looking at a degree of slope or a percent of slope. And so we always like to just go and evaluate it. And um, both our field reps and our dealers like to bring equipment to the customer's location and pretty much walk you know, the property that you're going to be mowing. Um, you know, if you can't comfortably walk up an incline, there's a good chance that you shouldn't be mowing it. Um, and there's other products for that. Sometimes that's a walk behind, sometimes that's an actual application um, hillside, so. Perfect, that makes sense. Brent, can you talk about the typical engine efficient? One, one question was, what are the typical engine efficiencies compared to other manufacturers, major manufacturers? Sure. So we, um, with Wind Grasshopper, we use Kohler engines, uh, Briggs Vanguard engines, and uh, Kubota, both gas and diesel engines. Um, in terms of efficiency, you know, we, depends on your application, how much power, what, you know, what size cutting deck. So besides having design match transmissions, we're also pairing a, uh, an engine or a power unit with enough power to be able to handle the work ahead of it. So, you know, we um, typically, our engines in our world, um, again, we're kind of unique in that we offer both a horizontal shaft engine and we also offer vertical shaft engines. Uh, so most other zero turns have vertical shaft engines today. Very few have horizontal shaft. Um, we still have several customers that prefer horizontal shaft. You get uh, many times they will tell us they get better durability, better life out of them. Um, you get a better lubrication um, of the bearings for the engine, et cetera. So um, it kind of depends on your application. We, we offer gas and diesel as well. So we're always trying to see what's the best fit for this customer. Um, sometimes diesel makes sense and sometimes gas makes sense depending on how their operation works. Great. And then Brett, can you talk a little bit about um, the training aspect? So once you, you know, if you decide to, to purchase a grasshopper mower, you know, what kind of training is needed for the occupant? What kind of training do you, does your organization provide? And sure. just so, some of those. So with every mower delivered, You've got your dealers that do um, uh, basically a pre-delivery inspection on the mower, and then they go over operation and maintenance with the customer. Um, for our commercial fleet and our government fleets, we do have additional training. Um, sometimes when you're dealing with a fleet operation, they want some additional safety training, additional preventive maintenance training, especially. So we do come back in and do um, scheduled classes, and that totally depends on the size of the group. Could be a couple hours, could be four or six hours. Um, and it's not so much that you need that much training later. It's more that, you know, this is a piece of equipment that's going to last them for years and they want to know how to do the preventive maintenance side um, to be sure things are checked and, you know, they get the longevity out of the equipment. Speaking of preventative maintenance, can you talk a little bit about, I know we, in the presentation, it talked a little bit about, the, you know, the easy access uh, to some of the different components. Can you talk a little bit in more detail about some of the preventative maintenance or maintenance um, aspects to these machines? Sure. So the overall design um, is very easy access. And, and what they were alluding to in the video is, um, you know, if you need to grease a spindle shaft for your your mowing deck that we've made it easy to access it. Um, your filters, et cetera, they're easy to get to. 
We've also tried to reduce the number of grease points on a piece of equipment. Uh, matter of fact, in our mid mounts, we're probably one of the um, easiest machines to maintain. Uh, on average, our mid mounts maybe have two or five grease points, whereas many manufacturers have two or three times that amount. So we're using maybe better um, pro uh, parts in some areas, you know, uh, self lubricating parts, etc. But we're also trying to you know, extend even into the transmissions where, like it's, like it was mentioned in our bigger machines, you don't have a break-in period. You can run a machine a thousand hours before you change the oil. And what that does for the end user is it simplifies that day-to-day -day maintenance. And the easier that maintenance is, actually the more it's gonna get done and the longer that piece of equipment's gonna last. Um, you know, people that sometimes go through a lot of parts Sometimes that's a cause and effect, things may be getting over greased or under greased. So the easier you can make that process and access for the customer, the more it gets done and really the better, better product you're gonna have for the customer. Perfect, and this is almost a follow-up question. Um, one of our attendees was asking, are there typical modifications required at the maintenance shops to service the mowers or accommodate attachment manipulation? No, not at all. Uh, anything that we have, um, we've really taken a lot of, you know, a lot of that work out of it. So once you get one of our products, I mean, our field reps can go over literally showing you how to take on and off implements right there in your shop. Um, obviously, you know, there's uh, normal tools that you would have if you need to take a shield off or something of that nature. But uh, we've really tried to simplify everything so that they don't need any special tools um, to do any of the work. We, we kind of came up with that radiator wand just out of um, what we saw in the industry as people using uh, like power washers to clean the radiator screens and then it would bend the fins. Well, that's a negative, you know, you really should use air to clean the machine off. So we've even developed a few small things to make things easier for the customer. Perfect, yeah. Those maintenance shops get a little, uh, they try to solve those problems. <laughs> so that's great that you guys are providing the tools for them as well. Can we go back, Brett, a little bit into the actual product um, and talk about, you know, I think on the presentation we talked, or you, you showed how you can work this machine on hardscapes. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the um, attachments and what those can be used for? Sure, so within the attachment, um, in terms of an outline of what we have, um, the actual cutting deck, we can side discharge, we can mulch, we can rear discharge. Um, and, and vacuum collect, and we have different collection systems for that. So if you're doing fall, spring cleanup, or you're collecting all the time. Um, we can also, once we can put uh, an edging attachment onto the deck, so if you have a lot of sidewalks, it, we have a maintenance edger that helps reduce a, a tremendous amount of um, edging time. You've got the ability to use rotary brooms, um, dozer blades, snow throwers for winter side, uh, many times people use our broom to dethatch a property. Um, you have cordless aeration equipment. So if you have any kind of practice or sports fields, it's very useful there. We have uh, sprayers for people doing um, applications onto their turf. And we have like a turbine blower even. And the turbine blower uh, extends itself into not only uh, clearing trail paths, um, you know, blowing leaves down in maybe, for example, even on a golf course, and then they come in and vacuum up. But I've seen where turbine blowers have even been used on artificial turf to basically come in and help clean tracks and clean the turf itself. So, Great. Well, Brent, we're at that 30 minute mark right now. Um, any final thoughts you'd like to provide the audience? Yeah, I think um, one thing I would leave with is, uh, you know, when Grasshopper's been around such a long time that, um, and we are constantly innovating, and I, and I think even customers that have older Grasshoppers, you know, it's, it's always good to get back into a piece of equipment and see what's changed. Um, we, again, have a large product line. We have a lot of custom options for people, um, so we can really customize a piece of equipment for maybe their different applications. And we try to really make it so that um, depending on your fleet or size of your fleet that we, you know, can help you both in ac accessing parts and uh, maybe not having to use as many parts, you know, through preventive maintenance. I think also just the removal of implements, being able to switch out 
today, I think a lot of customers have to buy several pieces of equipment that have several different engines to maintain versus they could buy maybe one power unit and do four or five jobs and only have one unit to maintain. And so that would greatly reduce some of their, um, their operating costs. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Brent um, and Grasshopper for sponsoring this informative session. I hope you all found it informational. Again, we'll be sharing a copy of the presentation um, with all of our attendees after this call, and it will be archived at facilitiesnet.com slash webcast. So thank you again, Brent and Grasshopper, and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you, Amy.